Hey everybody, here we are for chapter five, section three. We're gonna talk about how ecosystems change. That's our topic. Your essential question, I want you to explain how a pioneer species contributes to ecological succession. And how ecosystems change, really what we're going to talk about is your first key term here ecological succession. What is it? And there are two main types. Ecosystems are constantly changing. They are not static. They're kind of moving from one thing into another. New species are coming in. They're adapting to this, adapting to that. Climate, weather, everything. When we talk about ecological succession itself, this is a gradual process of change and replacement of the types of species in a particular community. Each new community that arises often makes it harder for the previous community to survive. They're kind of coming in and taking things over, using the nutrients, taking the stuff, whatever it is that you may have. Normally we talk about this in terms of primary succession and secondary succession. Not that this always this nice and neat, but primary succession is pretty easy to identify. This is the type of succession that occurs on a surface where no ecosystem existed before. So it exists in an area that before, prior, previously did not support any life whatsoever. Classically, we will talk about this in two general forms. One, a new island created by volcanic eruptions, the Hawaii Islands hundreds and thousands of years ago, or potentially millions, whatever it was. Volcano begins erupting underneath the ocean, it builds and cools, builds and cools, builds and cools, and it pops up out of the ocean. And now I have a brand new lava flow that is sticking up out of the ocean. It cools and I have solid black rock. No life. There was no life there before. It was too hot and now it's cool and it's just a solid rock surface. This is the first one. The second is typically where a glacier recedes. So a huge ice sheet, these things can be a hundred meters tall of solid ice that's slowly moving down a mountainside because all the snow melt, et cetera, it piles up, comes down the crevice like a really slow moving river. Well, it's completely frozen. There's no life in there or on it. But then as the climate warms, the seasons change, then this glacier will retreat and what it leaves underneath is just a rock bed, like a river bed, but it wasn't water, it's just been solid ice. No life there. So after this glacier retreats or it melts out, whatever you want to refer it, we're left with a solid rock bed and primary succession can come and take in. Primary succession, therefore, is much slower than secondary succession because it begins where there is no soil. Remember that soil and no soil is your easy go-to to figure out which one is which. When we have primary succession, it begins with a pioneer species. This is some form of species that comes in and colonizes an uninhabited area and it begins the ecological cycle so that other species can come in and get established. Over time, these pioneer species, or a pioneer species, there tend to be more than one, will make this new area habitable for other species. And this is where we get the community that replaces it, makes it harder for the community that was there as we get our succession. Typically, the very first pioneer species to colonize bare rock tends to either be bacteria or lichen. Bacteria comes in quite quickly a lot of times because it can be blown in, or let's take that lava rock, brand new island. Well, a seagull comes flying, goes, ooh, look, lo and behold, a place for me to land and rest my weary wings. And it flies and it lands down onto the rock and it sits there and it surveys all that it sees. Well, there's bacteria on its feet. 
sitting on its feet. So some bacteria come off the feet onto it. Maybe it shakes its wings and a feather falls off. Bacteria on the feather and it falls in. The bacteria can begin to break down from the bacteria. And right before the seagull leaves, what does it do? Well, if you've ever watched birds around, they're sitting on a tree or on a wire and they get ready to take off, they, yeah, they typically poop. So it poops. And then we have some bacteria in the poop. The bird takes off and lo and behold, bacteria are now in a place where there was no life, a pioneer species. Another that tends to do this is lichen. Lichen is this green, gray, sometimes red and orange, it has some different colors that comes in and it'll grow on bare rock. We'll sometimes see it here in Florida on the back or the kind of north side of trees, but it doesn't really like to be on the ground, right where there's a lot of moisture and soil, it tends to grow right on the back of trees, bare trees or rock. We often find them on kind of the back side of a building on a windowsill where it doesn't get as much light. You find lichen. And these lichen begin to put their little roots into the rock and make little tiny bits of the rock break off into chunks. And as that because it makes the little cracks in the rocks, weathering comes in, cool weather, et cetera, and the rain, and the rock begins to break down and we get the very beginnings of soil. And as any of these lichen actually break down and decompose, etc. We get little traces of soil and dust blows in and the bacteria and lo and behold, I have a climate that can support life. This is primary succession, taking us into, ta-da, secondary succession. Secondary succession is normally where we talk about it occurs on a surface where an ecosystem has previously existed. This is the process by which one community replaces another community that has either been totally or partially destroyed. Now, usually we talk about you are going to have primary and then you'll have some forms of secondary come in. But classically, we talk about primary succession and then it moves its way all the way up to a climax community. Or you had a community, but something destroyed it. It's been disrupted. Now, disruptions can be minor, they can be major. It's the whole range of things. We could have a forest fire that just destroyed a certain little area and then it has to grow back. We could have somewhere like my yard where I cleared it out and I turned it into an artificial grassland and then I abandoned my yard secondary succession comes in. So, but it's been disrupted some shape, form, or fashion. Humans, animals, storms, floods, earthquake, fire, something has disrupted this area, and now secondary succession comes in. It was wiped out, but there was soil. This is the big key. If there was soil present and a new community is coming in, secondary succession. No soil, bare rock of some shape, form, or fashion, then it's primary. Now we talk about bare rock from a lava flow or a retreating glacier, but it could be man-made. Think like the parking lot at Walt Disney World. It's not much different than a lava flow, right? It was just a man-made lava flow. So if that gets abandoned, it really is still gonna be more like primary succession coming in behind it. Well, back to our secondary succession. Something has disturbed, disrupted this area. Fire, flood, earthquake, what have you. And secondary succession takes over. Well, it gets replaced. This community, whatever's left, gets replaced by new ant things coming in. And then it gets replaced by a little bit older and bigger and taller things. And other animals come in to live in that. And it keeps getting replaced and replaced and replaced until eventually we get to what we call a climax community. Now, honestly, in the world of environmental science, we're moving away from this term climax community to a more biologically diverse area, but it still is being used and you need to know what we mean by it. This is just that final stable community that has reached equilibrium with its environment, depending on the temperature and the climate and everything else, we would expect to find this type of ecosystem in this area. 
And that's our climax community. And if we look around and we see something drastically different, we can realize, well, there's probably a disturbance of some kind, and we don't have a climax community. We don't have our most biologically diverse area at this point in time. Now, a climax community can and will change. If the climate changes, that the parameters of what's gonna grow there and why, or new species move in, but this type of community will remain the same or very similar as long as it's not disturbed. Once again, if it's disturbed, then we go back into secondary succession again. Now, the next key term, old field succession. This is a classic example. Old field succession is going to be secondary succession that occurs when farmland has been abandoned. Now, I'll talk about my backyard. It could be my backyard, but it's not very big. But the farmer, the guy has been growing corn his whole life, wakes up early, tills the land, seeds the sow, goes out, fences the fence post, drives the birds away. It's exhausting work. And his wife buys him a lottery ticket for his birthday and ta-da, he wins it big. The Powerball, $32 million. He never has to work again. Woo. So he just lets his farm go. This is old field succession. He has stopped cultivating his field. The next year, sir, some corn comes up because he just let it go. But then we tend to get a particular pattern of events. Weeds tend to come in where this nice corn used to be. Vines tend to grow in. And then we get some little flowers. And then a few years later, some shrubs. And then some smaller trees. And then pine trees. And eventually, some 150 to 200 years later, it's a if it happened to be here in North Central Florida, a deciduous type of forest. It just depends on what the particular type of climax community would be. The picture that you're looking at now, you need to have this one in your memory. You need to know the numbers pretty darn well. I can drive by an area in Florida, and I, if it's old field succession, I can tell you how long it's been by looking at the field. Well, they've only abandoned this for a couple of years. I just see some basic perennials, some few little weeds with some uh, wildflowers. Or, well, it's been three to five years. We've got some bushes out there, some little scrub, you know, 10, 11 years, mainly scrub, a few little pine trees poking up, lots of pine trees starting to get tall, and a few other little small trees. Okay, maybe we're in the 20 to 30 year range. I come by and you see mainly hardwood trees, live oaks, hickory, some, a few pine trees left in. I know we're looking at 150 or a year more succession. You can look at the size of the tree trunks and get an idea if we're talking about more like 100, 120, or are we talking it's been 500 years? There's a big difference in those type of trees, but it's pretty easy to predict. You need to be able to see a picture of this nature and be able to state roughly how long it's been. A few years, 30 years, 150 years. Now, when it comes to secondary succession, fire is one of the big ones. And currently this year, we have had all kinds of wildfires out in California, up in Oregon. They've been particularly bad. Of course, we've had a lot of fires in the Amazon and rainforest, but in deciduous forests. Now, natural fires just caused by lightning. This has gone on forever, if you will. Time immemorial. Lightning strikes or a volcano eruption and it can start a forest fire. This is simply part of secondary succession and it's very needed in some communities. Now, minor forest fires, what we sometimes call brush fires or just floor fires, these remove the brush. They remove dead wood that would contribute to major forest fires that'll burn out of control. It gets real dry, and if you haven't had a fire for a long time, then you get the crown fires. That's where the fire is leaping from tree chop to tree chop, and it destroys everything. But minor forest fires, a lot of times, animals depend on it because these burn through this little uh, brush and it causes what we sometimes refer to as fireweed, these weeds and things that shoot up right afterwards. And a lot of animals really prefer this type of vegetation and they really come and flock in after these little small forest fires. And it becomes part of the natural, healthy establishment of a set of woods or an area. 
So secondary succession is just a normal part, but once that happens and we get this new growth of little things coming in, even though it's in theoretically a climax community. But if it's been a complete crown fire, everything is burned to the ground, true, complete secondary succession. Is it primary or secondary? Is there soil? If there's soil already on the ground, then it's secondary succession. Doesn't matter how bad the fire was, how bad the floods were. If there's nothing but bare rock, then we're going to have primary succession. That is gonna wrap it up for chapter five, looking at this, how our ecosystems work. Take care, and we'll see you next time.